Sauron just had a huge victory in the episode zero hour. He almost captured General Dodana and Hera, which would have ended the entire rebellion, making Mon Mothma pull back and basically, yeah, just destroying the entire rebellion on that day. Had Bendu not stepped in and helped the Ghost crew, right now we would see a world where the Empire continues to rule. Thrawn is going to try and continue to destroy the rebellion in Season 4 as he did not die in the Episode Zero Hour. But just like anyone, Thrawn has weaknesses and I think they were shown in the Episode Zero Hour and I want today to talk about how the Rebels might try and extort these weaknesses. And I just want to add, these aren't officially confirmed to be his weaknesses in any way. I'm just theorizing and analyzing the episode and trying to figure out what his weaknesses are. But I do think it's a pretty good guess considering they were pretty clear in the episode. So let's just hop right in. I think Thrawn's first weakness is that he isn't extremely adaptive. I think he makes a master plan and most of the time that goes through perfectly and then, you know, something could happen and he could adapt his plan, but I don't think in a battle he isn't as adaptable as he would seem. You see, when Constantine, he breaks orders and formation, Thrawn did, like, he did save the battle, but Ezra did still get through, and when both of the Gravity Well ships were destroyed, they, he couldn't get the rebels to stay on the planet. So, not that anyone would be able to do that, no one would be able to fix anything after that happened, but I do think that is anyone's weakness, and it's also his weakness. For Thrawn's second weakness, we didn't really see anything go wrong with this in this episode, but I feel that something could happen with this. I think Thrawn is a little bit prideful. You can see that at the start, he is not accepting surrenders. He wants to see the rebels fail, and I think this sort of attitude could lead to something later where he can't really, you know, control anything because all he wants is he wants that pride and he wants to, he wants to win, but not maybe do what has to be done. What I mean by this point is that basically, if a rebel wanted to surrender, Thrawn might then say, no, I don't want you to surrender, I'm going to attack you instead, and then he could lose the battle. I do think Thrawn is analytical enough to avoid this, but it could be a possibility nonetheless. Thrawn's third and I think biggest weakness is that he does not understand the Force. You can see when Bendu attacks the Adalon base and with Thrawn on it, he asks Kanan, what is this Jedi devilry? He doesn't understand what all these things are when it comes to the Force. If he's going against Kanan and Ezra, he doesn't know what they're capable of. If he's going against really anyone with the Force, he doesn't know what they're capable of because he hasn't got any experience with them. He might have fought sometime in the Clone War, but I don't think he fought against the Republic, which means he has no experience of going against Jedi, which means he can't make strategic analysis and plans when it comes to going against Jedi, and he can't do it efficiently, simply because he doesn't know what they can do to counter that plan. In Zero Hour, Hera says to Kane and Ezra, you two are Jedi, you have the best chance of getting through. And I think this attitude might um, come into play in Season 4, where Hera assigns Kane and Ezra to mission simply because they are Jedi. And if Thrawn is not expecting that, it's going to be a very tough learning curve. So at the same time that the Jedi are learning to work against Thrawn, Thrawn is learning how to work against the Jedi, and it's going to be very interesting who comes out on top. Leave down in the comments below what you think about these weaknesses, if you think they are going to be fatal weaknesses, if you think they're even going to be relevant at all, and if you think Thrawn will end up on top. Leave those down below, I'll respond to as many as I can. If I get a lot of comments, um, which I have been, I'm thinking about making a responding to comments video, trying to address some of the really cool theories that you guys have come up with. I also have a Discord so we can talk and talk about you guys' theories. The link to that will be down in the description below. I have a Twitter, but like, I never use it because I've got no followers on it, but you can follow it if you want, if you want me to start using Twitter. Um, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, that actually helps me a lot. 
Um, if you hit subscribe, you'll see new content coming out as much as I can. And that concludes today's video. I hope you have enjoyed watching it. Again, make sure to like and subscribe, and have a good day.